Rooster Teeth is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Uh, keep your private information private. Don't let hackers steal your financial details. Head on over to expressvpn.com slash RTTV to learn more. Thank you, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring this stream and uh, helping bringing it to the people. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Podcast. I'm Gus. I'm Eric. Ahoy, I'm Cole. And I'm Elise. <laughs> And um, also Gus. Everyone, we did. We, I wasn't expecting a turn. Eric, wow. Eric was wow, he's not in to costume. Ten, oh, sec, Ten seconds ago, it was normal, Eric. We, we go to the intro. I read about ExpressVPN, and we've got Captain Eric. What are you talking so, costume? It's yeah. my Monday attire, friend. Ahoy. Yeah. Set That's what happens adventure. at a life at sea. You don't have to be afraid of hackers on the open ocean. <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially not with our sponsor, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN.com slash RTTV to protect your data today. If you're on the open ocean and still want to watch Netflix, you can do it too. It, it's a little known fact. It, 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 when you're in international waters, people can steal your packets. It's not oh, illegal. Oh, my packets! Right. Packets, your 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 pictures. Uh, you anything. have to do a DNS reset. These are catch-up packets for a year. What? No, come on. Here's what I think happens. I think. It's Monday, the day that we record this. Eric, he goes out on the weekend. He goes out on the water in the mm-hmm. boat. Mm-hmm. He's the captain of his own domain. He's listening to Yacht Rock full blast. And then he comes on the podcast Monday afternoon and he thinks he owns the place. It's That's what not, I think happens. It's not about ownership on the open seas, Elise. It's about friendship, fun, and fair weather. He did slack me right before this demanding I call him the admiral. Yeah, so. but that's but that's either here nor there. That's not. For that's the just show. our normal banter, yeah, though. That's, that's just, just our, our normal thing. conversation. Yeah. Elise, how are you? I'm doing well. I didn't spend the weekend on the water, but got mm. some sun nonetheless. So I'm feeling re-energized for the week. How are you all doing? Are, are yeah, you yeah. like a plant? You got all your sun photosynthesized. I def- definitely do. I have a sad lamp that I keep right here at my desk. A what? So, a, what? A sad lamp? Oh, a sad, sad lamp. So I can boot that. <laughs> what? <laughs> I could boot that up. I could get a few rays. I don't understand. You know? What's Wait, a is that the power lamp? of the sun in the palm of your hand? It's a seasonal affective disorder lamp. Oh. Um, oh. And uh, I mean, I, you know, these are blackout curtains. I, they got me recording from morning <laughs> till night. <laughs> so I don't, I don't get a lot of breaks. So, you know, every time between recordings, I just kick out the lamp. And I go, look, okay, I can do four more hours of this. Look into it. <laughs> it, it it's, <laughs> Is that the old Buer TL fifty five UK? Oh, Gus, you know it. What? Yeah. What? How? What is this? Yeah. What? What? It looks just like a lamp. Does it? What is it? I don't. It's, um, it's a sad lamp. It. Uh, it's a. It's a sad lamp with night light, and it combats seasonal affective disorder. Ten thousand lux portable daylight lamp, relaxing night light. Yeah, it's tricking your brain <laughs> into being happy. Is it uh, working? I could use that. I mean, I could do three more podcasts with just that little hit that juice, that's that juice that I just got now. I can do three more podcasts after this. And do I you will. Feel, do you feel better? Are you like, are you like way happy? Is James like, oh, I've noticed your mood is so much better. Have you been using your sad lamp more? <laughs> no. And actually when I, after I blast the lamp at myself, I can't see. For about <laughs> well, that's, part of the, that's part of the, you don't see anything. So you have nothing to be afraid of for the ignorance oh, is bliss. Yeah. Smart. It's smart. Yeah. Ooh, it's I a, like that. Yeah. It's, from it's like a version therapy. Yeah, I, yeah. It's, I went. I went to the doctor. the The last annual checkup I had was last year. It was like run start of the pandemic. It's been about a year. Anyway, I went to the doctor uh, last year, and uh, they, you know they do blood work and everything. And uh, it came back, and normally there's no problem. Everything's fine. When it came back last year, uh, the doctor was like, "You are severely vitamin D deficient." I was like, "What?" He's like, "You need to be taking like." 200% of the maximum dosage of vitamin <laughs> D every day for the rest of your life because you are so vitamin D deficient. And this was at like the start of quarantine. Yeah, I was like uh, last year. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, well, like okay, I guess I do spend a lot of time inside, but I felt like I was being judged or like shamed for my lack of sun uh, sunlight activity." I was going to make fun of you because Elise said that she had a nice weekend. She got some sun and then I was going to go, Gus, did you have a similar weekend? Were you out and about? Were you like <laughs> no, walking the dogs? Some How sun? Nope. sunlight? No sun. Had no, wow, no way. Yeah, but go PS5, figure. PS5. But PS5. PS5 I got. I, yeah. lo- I looked at it. Didn't play anything on it. What yeah, if they make the TV? <laughs> Hold on. What if yeah. they make TVs out of the happy lamp? Whoa. Ooh. Oh, It would yeah. be too bright. Yeah. Wait, it'd be Should too bright? every light in your house be a sad light or whatever? I think so. Oh, Elise? yeah, I, I guess. 
let's let's look up. Let's see what's different about a side lamp. Can How you can use it? Like, happy lamp. Set it up. Set it up on a on a, a stand and use it instead of the lights you have now. Does this mean we can replace the atmosphere? Finally, we could build a new one. You think that that's the way that we replace the atmosphere? Well, that's how we replace the sun. Lamps? Yeah, I put a bunch up there. Up where? In the atmosphere. <laughs> what do you think the atmosphere is? It's like the big circle what, around the little circle, the, right? The big, the big question is, where do you think the sun is? <laughs> it's really far. Okay, I understand it's really far, but I've been trying to think, how do we get rid of it? How do we not need it anymore? How do we get rid of the sun? Yeah. Why do you want to get rid of the sun? Because it's, it's destroying the ozone. Mr. Burns tried to do this. <laughs> do you remember that? He tried to block out the sun. Yeah. Yes. Oh, he, yeah, he yeah. wanted, you know, Springfield to be run by just his, his power. And so then Cole, somebody shot him, Cole. That's something to consider here. It was but that a was baby. a baby. I don't see any babies. Yeah. Mm, that's true. I that's thought true. of that already. I already thought of that. Mm. Gus, well, the sun's is... going to blow up in a couple billion years anyway. We may as well get ready to live without it. Yeah, right? build yeah, a big just, shield we now. Kind of wait it out. We just got to wait it out. No, Gus, but I've what seen was that your movie treatment? Sunshine. I've seen that movie Sunshine. We can but if we don't it. have a system set up before, then then we're fucked. Yeah, we need to get on <laughs> this. We need to have an alternative sun first before our sun blows up. That's smart. And we what already have the alternative sun. Figure this out. We already yeah. had the alternative sun. It's that lamp in we Elisa's room. Lamps. Well, I know yeah. Gus, having read the three body problem, knows that some planets have multiple suns. Mm -hmm. Gus, uh -huh. like, is this true? Tatooine or yeah. what? Oh, speaking of reading, um, I, I, I <laughs> that's want to your give... segue. That was no, no, your no, no, segue. No. <laughs> it, it's also, it also has to do with space. Um, the final frontier. Uh, Elise, you're one of the reasons that I started. I finally started watching The Expanse. Um, <gasps> Jeez, more about this, man. And you're all I, I, about this everyone show. needs to watch. Everyone needs to watch it. It's great. I, I want to say this because. Uh, I remember Elise was like, uh, you had like a sponsored poster. Or something sponsorship, from yeah. Yeah, when season five came out. And I was like, oh yeah, that show. I like that kind of put it into my mind. So I'm telling, I'm telling you and I'm telling Amazon that was money well spent because I started watching it. So oh my uh, God. I could uh, clip this out. Sponsorships. Yeah. I'm going to clip this out and I'm going to send and they're going to say, stop emailing us. Yeah, do they, well, you should ask <laughs> if they have a referral program because you just, that's a successful sign up right and, there. That's a conversion. And, yeah. And. I went ahead and I bought the book, uh, the first book, off of Amazon as well. And I got well, that's like the TV. whole point of the movie. That's the whole point of a TV series is to sell books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I haven't read the books. I, I, I haven't started yet. I'm probably going to I'm going to wait till I, I'm almost done with season five. Once I'm done with season five, I'm going to start the book. The, I think point <laughs> of, the point of a movie or a TV show is to sell books is very funny to me. <laughs> that's what that's for. Oh, yeah, that's I saw what that movie, Sphere. I got to go buy that book. That's what they're for. Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. <laughs> well, they want to buy, they okay. want to sell more books. Eric, then why were they always doing movie novelizations in the 90s? That's oh, true. true. And then why do they keep doing them now? You know how they're everywhere. That's the entire point of the anime industry is to sell more manga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Now I see. Now I see the cracks in the code. Cool. Yeah. I was based in this on manga. Okay. And All Harry right. Potter and Lord of the Rings. Those are that's what I've read. That, that's those are the Mongus. only movies. Yeah. But they're, they're, those are the only movies that have ever been made from books. Mm -hmm. uh, Guys, did, yeah, you take, did you end up taking vitamin D? I need to know. Yeah. Yes. Really. I take uh how much do I take? I take four thousand IU a day? I don't remember off the top of my head. Something like that. Jesus. But yeah. So can you I take on that? Are you vampiric? Uh, apparently. Well, I give you like but a yeah, suntan. I, I take, uh, no, it's not give me a tan, but they're gummies. So it's like a great way to start oh. my day. I wake up and I'm like, ooh, it's time to take my gummy vitamins. Gummy my delicious, oh. That's the my way. I take, all my, treat. I take all my supplements in gummy form because it's like a little treat. Yeah. Tasty it's like, treat it's like, a little, it's like a little candy and you're like, this is healthy. The doctor said I should be eating this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast, the world's oldest podcast where we're talking about vitamin gummies and your health deficiencies. Thank you for joining us this week. We're talking about Gus's Listen, vitamin D. We, we talked about loss for the first like 200 episodes. So I, can talk about I already D worked at a company that did that. I'm along with the ride with you. Don't worry about it. Mm. That was like the last great TV show. All the other was TV it? shows have been bad. Yes. And well, it was probably trying to sell a book, show. wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think had a video game. I assume you mean yeah. like network TV. Yes. Well, I mean, I, I, like, I kind of put it up break, against most other shows, but. Breaking sure. Bad. What about Breaking Bad? I didn't watch the last season. Hmm. I got, I was over it. I just, I like. Oh my God. What about so Game of Thrones? Here's, here's my issue. Here's my issue. Oh, with, Game of Thrones. It's also selling a book. Selling a book. I, I stopped. What's the, what's the episode where Jamie gets his hand cut off? That's the last episode that I watched. 
It's like uh, episode three or something. I just went. No, no. I, went, it's, well, <laughs> it's, I think it's the Red Wedding episode. I think that was the last episode, and I went, I don't think I like this show anymore, so I stopped watching mm. it. Uh, I have a thing with media where I do not finish it. I have a hard time getting to the end of something. I didn't watch the last episode of the so, first season of True Detective. I to, didn't watch the last to season recap. of Breaking Bad. Yeah. Lost is the great, the last great TV show, according to a guy who doesn't finish TV shows. Yes, correct. Because okay. uh, that's the last, one of the last shows that I watched. It was great. Do you and, think that uh, that may have ruined TV shows for you? Yes, definitely. Because I think that the show itself, I think the worst part about Lost was probably the TV show Lost. But everything surrounding Lost, I really enjoyed a lot. Where it was like, ooh, why did that bird say Hurley's name? What's with these polar bears? I'm having a great time. That was my favorite stuff about Lost. I've only seen part... the pilot and the final episode of Lost. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> You're that's insanity. That's awesome. I, so what did you I think about Lost? In it. Oh my what god! Did you think about it? Did you love it? No, I mean, what? I purgatory, oh. whatever. Who cares? Were you able to connect the dots? Were you like, oh, this makes sense? It's got a guy sleeping on a beach and a dog in both episodes. It's everything you could ever want. I mean, I do, yes, I do want to sleep on the beach and have a dog, but at the same time, I did not think it was. I, I mean, it's it's a bit tripe. Wow. Can I say that word on this podcast? Uh, that's you know. really, as the producer, I'll, I'll let it fly, but you're skirting it. Yeah, next time you're so, going to do that, let me know. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I got Careful you covered. Counselor. Yeah. I, I have heard that um, the show that you need to watch is The Leftovers, which I've attempted oh. like three times. The Leftovers is so fucking good, and nobody watched that. I, I watched that last year, like at the start of uh, the pandemic, like at the start of like trying to fill time. Uh, and it's amazing. I can't believe I didn't watch that show when it was on the air. It's and it's it's only like three seasons. It's so quick. It's absolutely incredible. I saw there was a cult where nobody talked, and I went. I don't think the show's for me. <laughs> it's it's good. Eric, and, uh, what yeah. what dollar amount would I have to pay you for you to spend a day silent, twenty four hours? Oh, I think I could do it. Uh, for twenty. Yeah, you got like 20 bucks. <laughs> 15? Ven if you could just Venmo me, that'd be sick. That'd be cool. Can we do it on like a Tuesday so I don't have to like, you know, it's like, oh, I can't Dude. be in these meetings. Sorry. Sorry, I'm making 20 up. bucks here. Yeah. I can't I'm, talk. I'm, I'm rolling in it. <laughs> I'm a rich little pay pig. Just, pay me. Wait, <laughs> yes, how, many, uh, how many vitamin gummies would we have to give you to not talk? Would you do it for talk? one vitamin gummy? I'll take. I, I I buy like a big container of them. You give me one big container, like one container of vitamin gummies. I'll do it. How many? Oh, that's vitamin. a lot. Can you? I don't know. I'm looking it up. I want to see if you can overdose on vitamin D. Listen, it's what the doctor you told me to take. Can. I, he better it's what not. The doc, it's what me, the doctor ordered. Vitamin yeah. D toxicity. Toxicity in our city. Oh no. Oh no. Symptoms include. Let me know if you have any of these symptoms. Ready? Nausea. Uh oh. Vomiting. <laughs> Uh oh, weakness Sometimes. and kidney oh, I mean, failure. Do you have any years. kidney failure? You guys okay? How are your kidneys? Are y'all okay? They, they say yeah. they're all right. All right. Mm. Mayo Clinic says be careful. Mm. Well, my doctor said be careful for the other reason. <laughs> <laughs> you could get kidney stones from it. I'm out. I I think what was it? It was like I forget what the scale was. Like there's like when you get your people your blood work back, it's like the scale, like from a low end to a high end. Like you're mm -hmm. supposed to be somewhere in this range, and mine was so far below the low range like it wasn't Gus. even on the chart like you couldn't Gus. see it it was like it was gone can... what the fuck aren't there like vitamins is don't there foods with vitamin d are you just like not eating any foods with it or what I, I don't think there are i think you have to i think you have to get it from the sun or from a supplement what about i thought oranges gave you vitamin d that's, that's vitamin c. c oh okay so you don't have scurvy no oranges are thirsty though they're always trying to get it huh <laughs> vitamin vitamin D. I, uh, yeah, no, I, I got it. I'm with you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Elise, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. It's just a good weekend catching some rays. <laughs> Asleep Elise, on a beach with your dog. It that's, the, the it's best. just like loss. Uh, Elise, what have you been working on? What have you been doing? What have you been up to? What's what's new in the world of Funhouse? So in the world of Funhouse, we have Bored as Hell coming mm -hmm. back with a new season of King's Dilemma. And that's really, really excellent. We went to the office recently and shot a few things. One was James Willems joint that we had intended to shoot right, actually right on the precipice of quarantine. Wow. And then of course it got nixed because of, you know, the world, but yeah, it's a really fun idea and I'm excited for everybody to see it. And Ooh. I personally have been doing a podcast 
that with Blaine and Alfredo for the Warner Brothers YouTube channel called Popcorn mm-hmm. and Shield, where we talk about some Warner Brothers movies, uh, which I, I mean, I can talk about movies all the time. Mm-hmm. I actually feel like on podcasts like this, like we just talked about Lost and then Leftovers, and I feel like I restrain myself with these yeah. just general podcasts just to not make them into movie podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we're, we, our first episode, we talk about uh, Godzilla vs. King Kong and the whole like monster verse. But then we're talking about Mortal Kombat. I'm hoping we talk about The Conjuring because I love the cuckoo, uh, ever, the Conjuring, <laughs> Conjuring universe, cinematic universe. So oh. anytime I can talk about that, I'm excited. It's, it's a blast. It's, it's a really good time, especially with them because we don't really get to talk about movies together. Mm. Cole looks skeptical. He says this might this seems like it might be a little corporate. Well, you're talking about the cuckoo, and, and I'm th- terrified, honestly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I saw leave. the Annabelle. I saw it and said, no way. Mm-hmm. I do you guys, just no go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, do you no. guys all scare easily? Absolutely. Look at me. I'm no. like a frightened little rat man all the time. What do you, what what about me says bravery? I don't think I do, but jump scares will definitely get me. I feel like jump scares are cheap though. I like I I scare easily, but I like scary things. So it's a real dilemma. I do not like scary things at all. I love Zero. scary things. Zero. Do not, do not give me, why, what is it about scary things that you like? I once read that if you have anxiety, uh, scary movies, you might gravitate to because it's like a, an anxiousness you can control. Mm-hmm. So it's a psychological sort of thing, but I don't know. I think it's thrilling. It's the fun of it. I love, uh, you know, every year I always go to a bunch of haunted houses or attractions and they always, they always think that they're going to scare like the small blonde woman, mm-hmm. but I just mean mug him. I just like <laughs> hit him with like you know, mean mugs. That's good. You, you showed you them get... those teenagers, yeah. <laughs> those unpaid teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> not scary farm, not scaring me. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Just... Is that the best one? Never been. I did. What? I went to the I went to the Warner Brothers one two years ago, mm-hmm. and there was an excellent attraction. I've never done anything like it where they brought us all into a small church, and a priest stood up at the lectern and started you know talking to us. And then all of a sudden, shit started going crazy in the church. Crosses started turning upside down, and the lights were flickering. Whoa. Demons. And then and then the priest went away, and then Reagan from The Exorcist <gasps> popped up behind Whoa. the lectern. Oh, I thought Ronald Reagan. Oh, I thought it was Ronald Reagan. Also. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> have you have you ever heard Ronald Reagan Jr. speak? No. Does he? Sound no. I bet you have. I bet. Oh, he sounds exactly like his father. It's wow. wild. But then, but then, anyway, a bunch of other Reagans started popping up all over the church and then crawling through the aisles, and, like hissing at you. It was excellent. So it was like a stationary haunted house, like you yeah. just sat there and just scary stuff happened pews. around you. Yes, basically, it was great though. I don't like that. Excellent. That? Eric loves it. No, that's like that's so. I remember going to a Bugs Life ride at uh, uh, California Adventure, and there's a part where a bee pokes you in the back. It, when you're sitting in your seat, and I almost got up and left. I went, too scary. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I, think so. This episode of Receipt Podcast is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Have you ever been in the bathroom and suddenly realized that you left the door unlocked? Uh, if you have, you know the feeling. Heart racing, fear coursing through you as you try to finish up before you see that doorknob start to turn. Uh, you are at your most vulnerable. Well, using the internet without ExpressVPN is the exact same thing. Do you really want all your data to be as vulnerable as you are when you leave the bathroom door unlocked? Of course you don't. Did you know your internet service provider knows every website you visit? Did you know they can sell that information to ad companies and tech giants who will use that data to target you? ExpressVPN is the lock on the door that keeps all your data secure and encrypted. No one will ever walk in on you doing your internet business again. Uh, I've been using ExpressVPN for about a year now, I guess. Yeah, about a year. Uh, I've got it on my desktops here. got it on my laptop over there somewhere. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's a must-have whenever you're using the internet. It works on every device, uh, phones, laptops, even routers. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can still be protected, even if they don't have their own ExpressVPN account. If a VPN sounds daunting to you, don't worry. ExpressVPN is just as easy as locking the bathroom door. You just fire up the app, click one button, and your information is safe and sound. So if you're like me and your online activity is your business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash rooster today. Use our link, which is expressvpn.com slash rooster. You get an extra three months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash rooster. I've told this story on the podcast before, but I'm going to tell an abbreviated <coughs> version. Uh, one time years ago, Jeff and I went uh, went to Universal Studios out in uh, L.A. Mm. And uh, Shane's telling me I'm a little out of focus. 
I'll, I'll get closer. Um, I went to the Universal <laughs> Studios in because uh, the focus is like here. Anyway, yeah, I know, but get closer. <laughs> I went to Universal Studios, yeah, in LA with Jeff, and they do. We we went on that that tram ride where they take you like tour of the park or whatever, and uh, like the whole time we were sitting next to this mother who was with her really young son. Right. And uh, anytime that we were we were going around, and yeah, at the time, like the Mummy was one of the big franchises for Universal. Anytime that the the tram driver mentioned the mummy, the little boy would start getting scared and say like, not the mummy, not the mummy. And the mom would be like, no, no, it's okay. You'd be like, look, we're just driving by the Jaws tank or whatever. And then like, there's one part in that tour where they act like, oh no, the normal way we're supposed to take the tour is broken. We're going to have to go through this back empty soundstage that we don't use anymore. Uh, it just so happens that it's where we filmed the mummy and oh, some people no. say it's haunted. <laughs> and they're like, you, you go... <laughs> I'm on the edge you of my go, seat, Gus. You go through and it's like thing where it's like supposedly like it's really dark and they like they play these scary sounds and like they're supposed to like they missed you with water, but it's supposed to be like beetles are spitting on you. And yeah. the little boy fell onto the ground crying like he was <gasps> un- inconsolable. And uh, like I figure like that was that's probably scarred him. He's probably still talking to his therapist about that visit to Universal Studios to this day. Um, like I, I can't imagine being that scared that young like, well it was just it was just supposed to be a tram ride i'm sure the mother thought he's scared of the mummy this will be fine and it's like nope you can't even can't do that yeah it's gonna be jimmy fallon talking to us for 30 minutes this will this should be fine yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh I'm no fix, i'm gonna fix my focus you're gonna get extreme close-up on okay. Gus now okay do you have anything like that that just oh, scarred you that. forever oh. oh alien alien yeah the movie there it is. <laughs> <laughs> no alien the creatures you know, just the aliens the thought, that are out there. Just alien, just the, the grays. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think like Alien, when I was little, like Alien, the movie Alien was super scary to me. Like mm-hmm. uh, the thought of an extraterrestrial creature whose blood was poisoned. Like even like if you try to hurt them, that like mm-hmm. the building blocks that make them are toxic and like could kill us. Like it was right. something that really like fucked me up when I was little. Like the universe is really scary is what I realized at that point. And it just filled me with like, an existential dread about what could be lurking in the universe we have no idea of that would kill us without even a second thought. Just, well, we don't even have an understanding of it. You right. Thought, you thought a lot when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I just thought like it was a scary monster. No. Yeah, I just didn't like when the android was an android. It was just like, oh my God, yeah. milky blood. Come that's, that's a lot of milk. No. But that's, that's surprisingly, milk. my favorite thing about the alien universe is that really Scott doubled down on saying like robot blood is milk. Yes. Yeah. Like, this is how it will always be. <laughs> yep. Yep. What about remember Prometheus? Remember how that was going to be something? Remember how oh, Prometheus yeah. came out and it was going to be like, this is going to be this, like, we're redoing the guys is back. Aliens back, baby. And then you watched it and you're like, I've seen this movie. It's alien. But then and, they uh, made another one covenant. Yeah. And it has the little, like the monsters on top of the ship and stuff. Like he's like, bah! like he's on top of the ship he's like running on it and walking and standing up and stuff it's all fucked up it's like die it's like bright out and he's just like i'm the alien here i am (laughs) (laughs) razzle dazzle i want to see eric photoshopped as the alien (laughs) (laughs) on the ship (laughs) just hitting him with that old razzle dazzle (laughs) that's what it was like it was everything that was exciting about alien and aliens was like you can't see these things. They're hidden in these corridors. Even like the strongest military, like the badasses of the badasses, like couldn't stop these things. There's only one person who could do it. And then like Alien Covenant is just like, but what if you saw it and it was and it was just like, <laughs> and you just have to go. Ah! I don't think I don't whole, think I finished that movie. movie. I think I Eric'd that movie. Yeah, and I was like, go, I'm not finishing this. Yeah, it's yeah. that Ericing a movie or a TV show is when you go. I get the point. We <laughs> both know what's happening here, and we're both done with it. Quite frankly, <laughs> and, uh, and you just walk away. You know, you put your cards on the table, and you say, "I'm done. I fold." And then you and you just walk off, and you uh, read a book or something because I because it. Oof. Because it was meant for a book. Yeah. They, yeah, they, they were trying oh, to sell you the yeah, book. That's what I did. I bought the I bought the novelization of Alien Covenant and I read it. Oh no. <laughs> and the, oh. Cole, it was so much more impactful have... when it said the, the alien was on the ship. Did you have something that scarred you, Cole? Yes, I did. Thank you for asking. What was it? Um so we used to have this restaurant called the Spaghetti Warehouse. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
I want to hear what scared him in the spaghetti <laughs> world. Was it the train car inside I'm the so inside? So, so yeah, excited. well, we we'd go there for every birthday and every family occasion. Yeah, um, you go there and just hang out. It's a good time. There's a lot of spaghetti. Well, <laughs> one uh, the the one thing is that every time we go, there'd be a clown who would come around and make balloon animals for you. But my brother and I, we were, we were both little. Uh, we were we were scared. We, we weren't scared of clowns. We were just scared of that clown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we'd tell our mom our order, our balloon animal order, and then we'd hide under the table whenever the clown came. Oh Except for, and this was the day that I knew that like nowhere was safe. We were hiding under the table, and we heard mom give the order, and they're like, "Well, where's the kids?" They're like, "Oh, under the table." And he came under there. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! He nowhere crawled under safe. the table with us, and we we're like, "This is such a breach of the rules! Like this is against the contract of the spaghetti warehouse." Yeah, the social contract that everyone implicitly, you know, signs. You go into spaghetti warehouse, the warehouse, you see the spaghetti, you sign the contract, you're good to go. Oh. Gus, can that be the title of this episode? Is against the contract of the spaghetti yes. warehouse? Okay, cool. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That, that must have just been heartbreaking for that clown. So, so. What? No, 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 know. no. Let's not defend the clown here. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm with Elise. I feel bad for. Th- it's just a guy yeah. trying to do his job, and he just wants to entertain entertain some of these kids. Oh, uh, we, so exactly. we feel bad for the clown, but we don't. We feel bad for the little kid at the mummy ride. Okay, I see. Uh, I want to hear more about the spaghetti warehouse. <laughs> so because. Uh, I, oh, there, where, where, where did you go to the spaghetti warehouse? What's where? Where, uh, where was that? I'm curious. Uh, Fort Worth, Texas, Fort Worth, Dallas Fort Worth. area. Because I know there used to be one here in Austin as well. It used to be down like on Second Street, I think. Um, yeah. And I think one the time, building I was, is still there, isn't it? Yeah, it's the old still there. Spaghetti warehouse building. <laughs> and <laughs> the one time I was in California, I think I was in Sacramento, and I was driving down the street, and there was a restaurant with nearly identical branding at the spaghetti warehouse and it was called the old spaghetti factory and that's I what they're talking like, about in chat i just saw in chat yeah, they're talking about it that, like, that's what like, i know i know i know was, spaghetti factory it was like the same restaurant except in the western part of the united states it was the spaghetti factory but yeah. for some reason here in texas i don't know what the difference is it was the spaghetti warehouse like i i pulled i guilty admission i pulled over an eight at the spaghetti factory because i was so like <laughs> what the fuck is that like, <laughs> i was like i gotta see if it's the same thing i feel was like it you think to- it's appealing to whatever your, your working class demographic mm-hmm. is, right? Like, are you yes. working in factories? Or are you working in warehouses? Well, maybe it's but produced this, in LA and shipped to Texas. The sp- name mm. Spaghetti Warehouse implies a giant store of spaghetti. And I'm not right. talking about the pre-made noodles. I'm talking about the, the cooked <laughs> cooked mm. Spaghetti buckets. Mountain high it, stacks of spaghetti that you can swim through like Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. It also <laughs> applies an entire supply chain of spaghetti. Right. And but that's what the factory is for. That's the supply well, chain. Yeah. They're 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 creating the factory creates the spaghetti. This the warehouse is simply where they store it, Elise. And ships it to the spaghetti warehouse where you have a spaghetti <laughs> man who goes and picks up your spaghetti and delivers it to you at your right. home. Ah, doing the old eh, I'm out on my old spaghetti delivery. How many families is looking for plates of spaghetti? I put it right next to the milk, the spaghetti cartons. SKC 13 says on the East Coast, it's the Spaghetti Harbor. I'm sorry, Elise. Oh, no, that makes sense. I I think he's kidding, but what are you going to say, Elise? I'm just curious. I'm just curious why the clown would be the de facto humanoid (laughs) of the spaghetti delivery system. I agree. I agree. I agree with Elise. It doesn't make any sense. Not a magician. Mm -mm. Okay. Not an animal handler. Why why would it be a magician? Yeah. I, I there was a restaurant that I would go to as a kid that where they would bring out a magician around the holidays to go around the tables do magic for the kids. Mm. What what what, what I, restaurant was that? I don't I don't what, remember what it was. I, I it think clown. I think it's because we were in the stockyards at least, and so that's like that rodeo vibe that like clowns at the rodeo. Oh, it was a rodeo clown. <laughs> the spaghetti <laughs> warehouse. Uh, yeah. It was, it was a rodeo clown making <laughs> balloon animals at the spaghetti warehouse. Yeah, that's all that's, of that sentence sounds like I had a stroke, but in that, fact, that's it's a even thing. weirder. Yeah, <laughs> now you can see why I was scared. I'm also not afraid of clowns no, anymore. I don't, I, no, he, I don't agree with that part. Yeah, was he in one of the scared. barrels and like someone kicked him to the table and like he pops out? <laughs> no, but that'd be a good way for him to go from table to table is get in a barrel and roll around. But but the implication that that it's a rodeo clown doing this is that there, it's implying that there's a rodeo bull like a spaghetti bull. Is well, there a spaghetti what, bull? Well, that's what pulls the the cart, the spaghetti cart. The bull? But yeah, the spaghetti bull. The, but hang on, Elise is Elise is deep in thought on this too. Wouldn't you need the rodeo <laughs> clown in case the spaghetti bull got out of control? Yeah. Oh, uh, then case closed. Apparently. That's why we have a spaghetti clown. 
I and it, and it also implies the existence of a meatball nuke. In case, <gasps> oh boy, relations Whoa. become heated. Uh oh, between the spaghetti clown and the spaghetti bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had something similar in San Diego, and it was just called the Omelet Factory, and that's not nearly as good as what it, spaghetti warehouse. What do they have there? What do you, you're asking me? What they have at the Omelet Factory? Yeah, like clowns, <laughs> bowls. What do they got? Oh yeah, he doesn't mean the food. He means what <laughs> entertainment <laughs> do they provide you while you stuff the the congealed eggs down your gullet nothing they just have breakfast they have omelets they don't have a man there's not a there's not like a noid type situation who like goes table to table can, with you can i tell you guys the most awkward experience i've ever had in my life revolving yes, please. around enter entertainment cross food mm -hmm. was uh -oh. um pardon yes yes go ahead i'm scared oh, okay here. um I was at a vegan restaurant mm -hmm. with a bunch of friends for, for someone's birthday. Mm -hmm. And so already at a vegan restaurant, you know, and so we're going to have diarrhea 13 hours, <laughs> now, basically, hey, hey, hey. Um, because all the, all the food is being seasoned with all these, you know, it, there's so much fiber anyway. <laughs> so we, we've come to the natural conclusion of our meal, but we're also just hanging around and chatting. And then someone comes out and, and, and moves like chairs out of the way and then on some table sets up a big piece of plywood and we're like what the hell is going on and then they're like a microphone comes out and then someone gets up on the mic and says hey everybody we've got some great stand-up comedy no! for you today oh, no, at the vegan no. restaurant and so we've we're at the natural point in our meal where we're like this is a <laughs> this is at an end oh. so the, the comic gets up and starts doing stand-up but we're all like, we can't sit around here and just wait for the vegan stand up to finish their set. Uh, um, and, I mean, I would assume they're vegan. You know, but I don't want to make that judgment. Anyway, not that there's anything wrong with being vegan. But so um, so then we're like, OK, well, do we get out? Do we go? And, and then we like 10 of us just got up and vacated this table that was right next to this uh, stage, question mark. And I felt so stage. bad because I was like that person, you know, they're I really don't want to be a dick to them, but we can't, right. we can't sit. I don't know how long this is going to go for. We can't sit around here. You know, my bowels are churning. So, um, do you think they yeah. have like a stay oh. at that vegan restaurant? Like every, every, <laughs> like they have a show every night. I think that's good, good on them. I, I think oh. on the weekend they're like pop up the plywood. We're doing do, stand up. Do you think that seeing all 10 of you leave, like made him reconsider his uh, career in stand up comedy? I hope I really, so. I really no. I hope not. Well, maybe I really doing, hope not. I really started, hope he. Un what was that called? Cool? Maybe he started doing stand up at the steakhouse after that. <laughs> maybe, I just I just hope that 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 comic was like, just kind of thought you know they're done their meal. Mm. They're just they're just leaving because they're done their meal. Uh, mm. I talked to him and he didn't think that. <laughs> oh, yeah. he's like he hey. gave up on his dream. Yeah. yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm oh. done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. Oh. How come, how come, how, what is with vegan restaurants and like weird stuff like that? There's a place, I think it's a chain. I'm I'm pretty sure it's a chain because it's a very weird place called Loving Hut. Gus, are you familiar with Loving I've Hut? I've never heard of Loving Hut. I'm looking it up now. Okay. So here's what I know about Loving Hut. I've been there twice. Both times I had to sit in a waiting room where a small uh, TV plays a VHS of a cult video i guess it's huh? owned, i think it's owned by a cult c-u-l-t cult and um huh. it is a vegan restaurant that is like cult owned and operated is my understanding uh so both times i've gone i've seen their weird little video and uh the first time i went i was like the food's good this is fine the second time i went i said the same thing and then the guy that i was with was kept like freezing on me because he was like coming down off ketamine. So it was a very, it's a weird place. It's a tale so as old as time. Yeah. Can, can I read you a few things about Loving Hut that I just yes, read here? Please. Holy moly. Yeah. Uh, Loving Hut is a chain of vegan restaurants with each uh, restaurant owned and operated independently. Mm -hmm. uh, blah, 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 whatever. Their slogan is be vegan, make peace. Mm -hmm. uh, the Loving Hut concept was created by Ching Hai, whose followers call her Supreme Master. Ah, see, uh, yes. okay. Most restaurants broadcast Supreme Master TV, a channel inspired by Master Ching Hai in their dining areas, broadcasting 24 hours of positive news a day. Uh, in 2011, the Phoenix News Times wrote that detractors depict the Loving Huts as a recruiting mechanism for a cult with a di dictatorial leader who exploits her followers. 
uh, the, the Loving Hut restaurant soft pedal Ching Hai's messages through free literature, DVDs of high lectures, and the presence of TV screens fixed to the Supreme Master TV satellite channel in every restaurant. Yeah. Huh. There you go. It's It sounds delicious, Eric. I'm going to be it, honest with you. Oh, hey, up straight up. Great vegan food. I love. I lived with like nine vegans in college. Like one would move out and one would move in. There was just no conversation about it. It just, it simply happened. And Loving Hut was a great little place that you could go to and be like, oh, I can enjoy a meal here. And vegan food has come a long way. It has come a very long way from where it was in the early 2000s. The, uh, uh, it, looks like, it looks like the closest one to us is in Houston. Oh, let's road trip. Let's jump let's in your trip. little Tesla let's, and beep, beep, drive all the way out there. Let's do a podcast, a cruelty-free prod- podcast. First time I ever. I love it. Oh, no, I think it's great. The Ching Hai Wikipedia page has a lot going on. Does it? Yeah, Is there's it like controversies, like banned in China. Hai oh. gave $640,000 $640, to Bill Clinton's presidential legal expense trust. Oh. Are we... Breaking uh, story on the podcast? Today? Breaking story, Ching Hai. We're cracking this case wide open. <laughs> wide open. We're getting to the bottom, and I don't care who's at the top. We're figuring this one out. I love this. This is great. Finally. Um, this episode of the Received Podcast is brought to you by Manly Bands. Uh, when you've been married as long as I have, sometimes you realize you need to change things up a little. Talking about wedding bands, uh, you might want another wedding band if you're going on vacation, special events, you're going to be outside, like you don't want to lose... Your main wedding band, you can have like a backup for when you're out, you know, being rough and tumble like me. <laughs> Whether it's your first wedding band, a replacement, or a spare, Manly Bands is here to rescue from an otherwise hellish band buying experience. Uh, you know, we'd actually have to go into a jewelry store, talk to an actual person, pick out a ring out of a limited selection uh, because men's rings have always been more of an afterthought, right? But with Manly Bands, there's no more of that nonsense. The process is super simple. If you don't know your ring size, you can get started with a Manly ring sizer to get the perfect fit. Uh, it's super great. You just try it on, you find out, oh, that's what size I am. Uh, then all you got to do is pick the ring you want. And I'm not exaggerating when I say they have the coolest and biggest selection of men's rings I've ever seen over at Manly Bands. Uh, from gold, wood, antler, steel, dinosaur bones, or even the meteorites that killed them. Plus curated collections like Jack Daniels whiskey bands, uh, barrel collections. Uh, there's something for everyone. Um, I got this one right here. It's uh, pretty simple. I like it. It's kind of like a satin uh, finish on the ring. So it's not super sparkly or anything. Uh, it's the Wiz is this one. If you're curious, if you want to look it up on the website, you can find it for yourself. Uh, after you pick your band, Manly Bands offers free shipping worldwide, a 30-day exchange policy, and a free warranty. So what are you waiting for? There might only be a 50% chance of your marriage working out. There's a 100% chance you'll love your Manly Band. So to order your Manly Band and get 21% off plus a free silicone ring, go to manlybands.com slash rooster. That's manlybands.com slash rooster for 21% off. Manly Bands, the best damn rings, period. Can, can I, sorry, I didn't mean to take us in this direction and then go immediately in another direction, but it got me thinking and I need to, I need to vent about something quickly. Um, uh, you talked about positive news being played at Loving Hut and I'm all for that positive news. Great stuff. Uh, John Krasinski's only good news or whatever fucking thing he made and then sold to CBS makes me so mad. It makes my, I'm like. I'm like <coughs> shaking. I'm so upset thinking about it. It was, he fleeced so many people into whatever that was and then sold it for so much money and it disappeared and he just went, ah, like he's alien dead. on top of the covenant ship. He's gone. He's I don't Jim from the office. Yeah. And I hate it. I hate, he, he used his goodwill for as Jim from the office to make his good only good news thing whatever that was called and then sold it to cbs after two episodes he's like we're only doing good news here and then he sold it for a bunch of money and it's just fucking vanished what was that do you what are, you, that? are you krasinski are, yeah are you mad because he's not giving you good news anymore eric do you want I, to get a hold I'm of him mad. to give you good news i'm mad here's the reason i'm mad he stole it, your idea because <laughs> because it is something that it, I think that is preying on people who are looking for positivity and, and, and good news. Great, great, great stuff. I think there's nothing wrong with that. I, you know, you can't just inundate yourself with all the negativity all the time. I understand that's great. He did that under the guise of like, I'm bringing you positive news. Did like two episodes and then just sold it for a bunch of money and went, hey, you're, fuck you. And then now it's gone. Now there's not anything. So what was the point? Was the point the money? 
was the point the making of the good news thing what was the what was it what was well, what, the, what feels understand. worse is that it seemed like a genuine idea at first of oh i want to do something to put goodwill out there and then the second like a dollar sign got attached to it he was like oh absolutely that, cole absolutely. that one we'll go with the, that the uh, the uh, hey, look look the road to hell is paved with good intentions and i understand and, and, and that money. is what i believe john krasinski sold out to the almighty dollar no more good news only bad news have you noticed that since he left Where's all the good news? He took all the good news, news and sold it. That too. No, he did, he did not. He did nine episodes. What are you bitching about? There, that's, that's plenty not, of good news. Th and now where is it, Gus? Where is it? It's dead, along with all of our hopes and dreams for the world. That's what I'm saying. He, the, if the goal, if the goal was to make a show, then make the show. But if the goal was to sell the show, then that's fine. But it did not feel like the goal was to sell the show. So him selling the show was. I, to me, it feels like fleecing people. It feels no, like I'll, fleecing people. I'll be honest. I had not heard of the show. I had not no idea what you're talking about. I had to Google it, it while so you were talking mad. about it. It, it makes to look me it up. like well, I get like ups. I'm like angry. I'm like vile. Like just it was like, like the Eric, second you take a break, week. You take a it was like the second Wait. week of quarantine, and it was just like, oh, I found a video of a cat, and he would share it. Let me pose this, this scenario for yeah. you, Eric. Please. You you purport to be this uh, somewhat you know a, a ratuitous care rat. Yeah, right. so we do this True. rat thing. Mm -hmm. Character. Correct. Universal Studios comes to Eric. They come knocking on the door. They say, Eric, we want our own, uh, you know, mouse mascot. We want mm -hmm. Eric the rat. Mm -hmm. Well, to this time, you've only been doing it for the delight of your coworkers and fans. Does, Are you going to will that, you sell the Eric rat likeness I, and character to Elise, Universal Studios? Elise, I've uh, been doing what you call a rat character the entire almost 35 years of my life where I'm constantly <laughs> just hunched and sort of like this. Like it's <laughs> it's not so much it's less of a rat and more of a guy in a mobster movie. He goes, yeah, yeah, boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's that's kind of that's kind of my whole demeanor. You know what I the mean? The Universal wants it. They're willing really to pay. I'm, I'm fine with that because I didn't call it Good News Rat Man and sell it to people <laughs> as the Good News Rat you should, Man. You should absolutely make Good News Rat Man. <laughs> If you made, I think, if you made a show for Rooster Teeth called Good News good Rat news. Man, I think Good News Rat Man. Episode. Good News Rat Man's one of the new Avengers, right? Like he's going to be yeah. in like the yeah. new, he's, yeah, the well, new MCU. He's in the multiverse. Yeah. Can we can we spitball and break this show? Because I really yeah. want this to be. Can we? But it should be called. It should be Good News, comma, comma Ratman. Rat man. Man. Mm. Right. Like what? Well, like a Welcome Back Cotter situation where yeah. I'm the titular Cotter. However, I am the Ratman. Uh, Wait, are you yeah. saying good news to Rat? Like, hey, Ratman, we got some good news for you. It's unclear. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right yeah, now. Yeah, the comma kind of gums it up. Right, yeah. right. But that's the thing. It doesn't, it's, you know, face jam, space jam. You kind of, you know, you get away with some stuff. So you can kind of make it whatever you want. So good news Ratman could really be whatever you want it to be. You could be I like a think, Christian rat. You could be like, have you heard the good news? Oh, oh. You, think it's, you think it's kind of like a door to door knocking on Colts. the Colts. I think it's like a cult that you're trying to sell. Oh, like in Is my it? restaurant. Yeah. I'm picturing I kind of pictured it. I, yeah. Oh, I pictured like a Mr. Rogers kind of oh. thing. Rat, Ratman is the titular Rogers character, uh -huh. and Gus would play like the friendly neighbor. Wow. Yeah. And and I would be the woman that Ratman has trapped in his basement. <laughs> <laughs> but is, wait, is, Open is the Ratman? Door. Is Ratman in a rat suit, or how do you? Or is it just like a normal person who wears or gray he a lot? Heavy prosthetics, like yes. Oh, okay. Wow. Wow. She went yeah. all the way. For I thought it was going to be a Beekman's World situation where a guy mm. was just kind of in a rat costume. <laughs> I like that level of prosthetics where it was put the little nose on. You've got ears on a hat and then sort of a rat costume that you wear a white T-shirt under. That's my level of commitment. No, to this you, rat you might be from Pan's Labyrinth. Like that's the level we want to see. I don't know if I like that. I don't. I don't know if Good News Rat Man is feeling so good because then it's. I guess it would work because it would really accentuate my rat features. Not so much in my look with the heavy prosthetics, but the way that I would carry myself in my body would definitely be more like, oh, I'm uh, here. Yeah. This is no, like I get the only that. way it's, I can. It's stand. not you. It's not you. We're gonna hire Andy Circus to play the rat. I'm sorry. That's yeah, yeah. smart. I'll be honest. Straight yeah. up, I think it's a great idea. He can he can be an ape man. He can be a Darth Maul. He can do anything. That guy's mm -hmm. versatile. He's way better at this than I am. Hundred percent. Yeah. Since Absolutely. you're so since you're so small, you can be tiny on top of his head, pulling his hair and controlling him. Oh, so. like a Ratatouille Ratman. Like situation. Ratatouille. Oh, 
That's smart. I I think Cole would be the kind of like mailman character that you. Spaghetti man. I want to be spaghetti. Like dips on spaghetti man. <laughs> oh, okay. Spaghetti spaghetti man slash mailman character. Yeah. He's just and you're always trying to spaghetti. When you deliver the mail, you're always trying to like serve rat man with papers. <laughs> Yeah, man's trying to avoid them. Uh oh, it's the spaghetti man, and he's here to give me my divorce papers. <laughs> We've been on a trial separation, and I'm not feeling it. And I, I do think Gus would be the neighbor, mm -hmm. but yeah. he's also under he's also undercover FBI. Yeah. Oh. oh, I'm like I'm like trying to like put a, a tap on Ratman's phone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's smart. Oh, I could be trying to like steal the good news before he can <gasps> spread oh. it. That way, I can get the get scoop it. on him. Classic yeah, like, FBI. Then, Classic FBI Krasin was trying I, to steal the good news. I can Krasinski it and sell it yep. for a few million dollars to yeah. the highest bidder. Oh, as insane. well as your every episode. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. As well as your papers, I could be constantly trying to slip in bad news. Yeah, disguised oh. as good news. Everyone's out to get the Rat Man. <laughs> Everybody wants to but, hurt the Rat Man with bad news. Good news. But good all news. Only. But good news, Rat Man. You're gonna come out ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely every episode should start with someone saying good news, Ratman. Uh, like I it's like a, it. a phone call that Ratman takes a phone call and someone says, Good news, Ratman. Or mm -hmm. you know, Gus walks mm -hmm. up. Good news, Ratman. It's this, never actually good news. Yeah, this definitely feels like a Pee-wee's kind of playhouse. That's situation. exactly what, like a, a puppet's everywhere. Right. But it is just sort of like a studio apartment where my bed is constantly in the shot because I yeah. sleep. Like we have to like move <laughs> it to like, oh, we need like a better shot. Hang on. Let me, yeah. you grab one side of the futon bed. We'll set it up. So that no. way it's back to being a futon. It's a Murphy yeah. bed. It'll just go into yeah. the wall. Yeah. I, hey, though, I, I helped build a Murphy bed one time and I was like afraid of it. That it, the spring loaded action in which a Murphy bed goes back into a wall is like terrifying. Danger. Yes, dangerous is a great word for it. It happens fast. So wait, does so Ratman sleep in the Murphy bed while it's up? He I hides don't... there from That's the paper. Right. Yeah. 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 Someone's there. trying to give me bad news. Or oh. and I go back into the wall. <laughs> um, Death by oh. Snooze News says we should make you a rat VTuber. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Uh, I don't want to do it. It sounds like it costs money, but I think that's a great idea. Absolutely. Um, I had an idea to try to make Gus a VTuber. I think I want. I think I want to make Gus we a VTuber. Should, we should do it. Nobody wants Gus, to see my real face. I mean, would you do it? VTuber would you do? Yeah. Would, you, would the, what, the Gus VTuber be and Gus? Yeah, would, who, would it be what? And Gus? Yeah. Like like and Gus comes out of the shadow and all of yeah. a sudden. Yeah. Final uh, final reveal debut. Your debut. Mm. Yeah. Like. What would you if you could if you could make a VTuber of yourself? Like, would you want it to look like an anime version of Gus, or would you be like, you know, your dog or something? Yeah, like a like an anime version of me. Maybe like the old uh, comics version of me, like that kind of Ooh, thing. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. Here, look. Interesting. Oops. Oh. I wonder. Like, I wonder if that's doable. I'll, ha I'll have to look. In go. I'm going to look into it. This is I, something. I, this is a Eric, conversation can, I was already having. So I Eric, wonder. We can talk. We can talk. I've yeah? been doing research. Right. I've been doing research. Cool. This is a good idea. I think this. I think VTube Gus mm. is a very good idea. At least, do we have your uh, sign off to do VTube Gus? Do we have your blessing? Wait. So are we? Are we making Good News Ratman? VTube <laughs> Gus is a character in it. Yeah, and Gus will be the like the detective on the TV. It's like Good News Ratman. I have uh, news. I'm going to get think, you, Ratman. I, I would love a VTuber. So I'm just trying to understand if VTuber Gus is a character within Good News Ratman. Uh huh. Right. Right. You seem to be lo like you seem to be straining what? to figure out how it. Is. That's me in every meeting when we have to go over something for the third time. It's just me leaning back, going, "No, it's not." Let's just well, let's circle back. Here's, in a here's the thing: is I, I love I love mixed media and art forms. So I would love yep. if you know my character was a puppet. Mm -hmm. Gus is a VTuber. Mm -hmm. You're the Rat Man. Cole's the Man Man. Oh, this is you I'm, know yeah. I'm loving this. This is going oh, really wow. good. Hold on. Okay. I think this is a great idea. I'm looking in the wrong direction. I, Hold on. My favorite thing about coming on the RT podcast is breaking stories. Yeah, this yeah. is what yeah. we do here. This is a this is a news forward and podcast. This we'll is have, the, the we'll news have show. King Hai come on the show. <laughs> Whoa. And she'll spread her good news to everyone. Yeah, I really like VTuber Gus. This is really working for me. VTuber Gus um, has an air about him. Yeah, like, at least we need to figure out what your character is all about in Good News Ratman. There's somebody who's listening to this podcast who hates this bit, and they're just going, "Shut yeah. up about Ratman!" Yeah. Shut no, up I think about that's, Ratman. That's bad news, Ratman. This is good news, Ratman. It's, it's definitely a Stockholm syndrome thing. Oh, where she's been, she's been in the basement of Ratman for long enough uh -huh. now. <laughs> He's the only <laughs> one who can in. protect me. 
He's the yeah. rat man she, yeah. says that there's a lot of bad in the world. It's kind of like a yes. room situation. And she's a princess. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That, so, wow. That came How out of nowhere. You. Yeah. She's, I like uh, I like that you're and making they, your character everything you want to yeah. be. I like that. And they say <laughs> lightning doesn't strike twice. It's Whoa. <laughs> Listen, we're I mean, yeah. we're trademarking this right now. Don't anyone yeah. try to steal good news, Rat Man? I uh, it's this is really something. <laughs> or good I'll try to serve you papers if you try to steal it. Yeah. Can we that's man. We should we should make an intro for the show, like to kind of set the tone and prove okay. the concept it. Yeah. Okay. We go, so we got, we got to work, we gotta nail down our characters and mm -hmm. put together like a 90s style uh right. intro montage of like Ratman doing various things and avoiding his enemies and you yeah. know, <laughs> getting and giving good news. Well, the questions are who are Ratman's enemies? Because yeah, I think need... that his enemies are also his friends. Uh, yeah, oh, I definitely. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's a big frenemies situation. He's he's got nothing but frenemies. Frenemies coming out the ass for Ratman. It's well, tough. We, we should have an episode where he addresses his frenemies. Yes, uh, on this episode, uh, he will address his 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 frenemies. Number yeah. one will be like a very evil kind of squirrel. Number two, Ratman's number two enemy is God himself. God doesn't have to make an appearance, but he is against Ratman. <laughs> <laughs> number three will be like the the spaghetti man or something yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. We, think, we got room the list is long it, yeah never i think ended. this is like the season one finale is like right, right. rat man yeah. addresses his 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 haters yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there there should be a log line for an episode that's just like rat man apologizes and then takes it back <laughs> <laughs> That's the yeah, that's the episode description. I like I like that I don't know exactly what Ratman does or who yeah. he is, but I feel him in my bones. I really identify with this character. I, I want to know there, all about it. There, it should be the kind of thing where people ask Ratman why he doesn't work, and he he says he has a he has an explanation for why he can't hold the job. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the one that Ratman apologizes. What good news did he deliver that was an apology? Right. But in hindsight, in order for it to stay good news, he has to take it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it should be like, you know how on Seinfeld, Kramer had the job at the bagel, yeah. uh, the bagel place, but then yeah. he didn't. The reason he wasn't working was because they've been on strike for 15 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. It didn't want to cross so that. that. Should, <laughs> yeah, he didn't want to cross the picket line. So it should be something <laughs> like that for Ratman. <laughs> <laughs> where uh, like Ratman, he, well, no, like everyone's like Ratman, you're always home. Like, uh -huh. and Ratman's like, well, no, I can't. You know, I can't work because X, yeah. Y, or Z. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's kind of like a Joker. How did I get these scars? Situation, but it's a Ratman talking about why he can't work. Uh, he's not allowed. It's it's kind of like a yeah. Janice well, and Sopranos. Maybe type it could be like carpal tunnel. He, he's a professionally trained chef, but if he works in a kitchen, the health inspector fails the restaurant. Oh, see, that's tough. It's just like another. A catch yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the his frenemies. The down. health inspector is one of his frenemies. That's tough. The health, the health inspector is like, I don't want to do this to you, Rat Man, but I have no choice. <laughs> F. It says right here, Rat Man, we can't have any rats in the kitchen. That may and be a great souffle. A <laughs> oh, the health, oh, okay, so a whole new thing. The health inspector should definitely be his roommate. That yes. Wow. So Ratman's always trying to get a new restaurant job and sneak it behind the back of his friend of me, best friend of me, the health inspector. So, so like he comes uh, back from work and he's got like spaghetti sauce on his shirt and the health inspector's like, why is there spaghetti sauce on your shirt, Ratman? He's like, oh, yeah. I was at the supermarket and a jar oh. exploded on me. Ratman's like, no, that's blood. That's right. <laughs> that's Sp blood. Spaghetti sauce? No, that, uh, I already, uh, that, that's blood. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that's definitely blood. Gus, I think we have to change the title of this episode to "Good News Rat Man." Good News <laughs> Rat Man. I mean, this is just this is really something. I think in two years, when we have like thirty six episodes of "Good News Rat Man," this will be like the like people will be like, "Where did it all begin? How did Entertainment Tonight will be interviewing us?" And they'll be like, "Where did the idea of Good News Rat Man come from?" We'll be like, "Well, listen to the Rishi podcast and find there out." There used how to be a show called. Together. Good news with John Krasinski. <laughs> <laughs> that son of a bitch. <laughs> the, yeah, there'll be there'll be spinoffs like what do you know, Rat Man? Yeah. Who hurt you, Rat yeah. Man? Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll make eight episodes and then we'll sell it to CBS. It's gold. That's my fucking yeah. genius. Oh. <laughs> this episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by our show's new sponsor, BetterHelp Online Therapy. I think I speak for everyone when I say that 2020 and 2021 have been different. And those differences can be difficult to deal with. It can be so hard to open up and talk about the things that we're struggling with. But when everyone's dealing with something, it gets easier to do it. There's so many people battling their temper, the stress, depression, anxiety, PTSD, the list goes on. I mean, everything going on in the world in the past year has been overwhelming, even for me. You know, it's, it's just there's a lot going on. 
Uh, BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Um, you know, it's like me. I normally, I wouldn't, I'd want to I'd close that. If, it, if we weren't doing a podcast, I'd probably turn it off. <laughs> uh, it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. You can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. You can join the millions of people who are seeing what therapy is really all about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Rooster podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash rooster. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash rooster. I love that, man. <laughs> this is more thought than John Krasinski put into his fucking <laughs> good news go. show. <laughs> This is more, Ratman has characters. It's deep in mythos. There's like, oh. there's lore, there's understanding, there's character arcs, there's enemies. John Krasinski just went, oh, did you see that the prairie dog at the zoo? He's, he had a birthday party. And he's like, thanks CBS for $8.9 million or whatever. Son of a bitch. Yeah, it, and it should, yeah. it should be that every episode, Ratman learns a new life lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, something that, you know, uh, something in morality that would make him actually be a better person. Right. But then yeah. also every episode he goes into his rat hole at night to go to sleep mm -hmm. and then uh, trips over an exposed wire <laughs> and the electroshock it, oh! like wipes his memory. Oh. He forgets the whole so, day. Yeah. yeah, every yeah, like, every episode. He slips on ice and just like gets a concussion or, and can't remember or, anything. Yeah. Or like his bedroom's in the basement. He's got carbon monoxide poisoning and he doesn't yeah. know. And it's like, yeah, he yeah. doesn't forget it. everything. Uh, in Important. chat, who was it? I think Two Finger Typist said Ratman was working at the spaghetti factory, but he got let go. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, he had it. It was a great gig, too. Yeah. Ratman had a great gig at Sp Spaghetti Factory. He was a clown. He was making balloon animals. The children <sighs> would hide from him. And the manager just said, we can't be having this at the spaghetti warehouse. Uh, and that, he got let go. This is why I'm his frenemy. Yeah. Mm. Um, he scarred I, me for life. Yeah, well, but I also think. No, go it, ahead. Well, what if? I mean, what if he gets fired for a completely unre un unrel related? Re like he's just he's he's been sleeping with too many of of the yeah. customers. Yeah, I think that. I mean, another thing that he could be fired for is he gets hired at a vegan restaurant and there it's day one and he's going to do some stand-up comedy and everyone's real excited about <laughs> yeah. it. It's a full house. And then yeah. he gets up there and the, they tap on the mic and they go, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to uh, welcome our stand-up comedian. And then as soon as he stands up there, a group of 10 people just walk out. And yeah. I think that, and then he gets fired. That yeah. raises a great question, which is what is Ratman's dream? What is he Ooh. trying to- Like what is he, what is he trying to achieve? Yeah, he just wants to stand up at a vegan restaurant with with his uh with his wife and get back together for the kids. <laughs> he, he just he's just tired of living in the studio. He wants to he wants to move uh, back in and patch things up. Do, mm. He has rat children, or are they like? Is he like a dog dad? You know, no, what they're I mean? like, like they're like they're like dad. To, totally human, normal children. They oh, look, just yeah. like regular children. It's yeah, like yeah. so yeah. Mm. so. Ratman is the human size that you are, correct, Eric? I, I, he would have to be, I assume, yeah. unless we can figure out how to shrink me. Well, he's more so Andy circus size, but yes. Mm, yeah. So is it like you go into his house and it's, it's a very human house, but then there's a giant rat shaped yes. hole yes. That, <laughs> that he retreats into? Because he has yeah. a roommate. Like he has a roommate and he goes into his normal bedroom. Inspector. Yeah. And there's also the, the room down to the basement where the princess, who's also a captive lives. <laughs> <laughs> but at night, he just she kind wants of, there's like there. a beaded curtain, you know, in front of just like a big rat hole that's carved <laughs> into a wall. And he goes, yeah. all right, good night. And then he pulls the beaded curtain back and he goes in to his rat and hole. It, everyone in the house goes, good night, rat man. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know what we've made, but I, it's, it's gold. I can tell you that. It's really good. It's you can check it out on Rooster Teeth first. Yeah, it would have to be a first to justify the expense that's yeah. going to yeah. go into good news. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be the most expensive yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> Until we can sell it to CBS for $8.7 million. Yeah, that's that's the goal. We're just going to shoot it like a multicam sitcom on, on, yeah. the, sa on the Stage 5 stage. <clears throat> It, we're not we don't know how to do that we've never shot a sitcom before fuck it we're just gonna wing it we're well, just gonna figure, figure it, out. it out shane's got it shane's got it figured out don't I was worry gonna say about the studio it. audience should just be the employees working yeah. on it and if yes, they it's laugh like, it's like a podcast when we're in the studio where it's yeah. like we laugh it's me and nick laughing in the background but i'm yeah. on the show so how did that happen <laughs> uh oh all right what <laughs> i'm everywhere if only, if only we had the technology for this no <laughs> Elise, I'm I'm all about this. I'm excited for Good News Ratman to live on the Funhouse channel. Yeah, I can't I can't wait because uh, 
the, well, I think when we were in court, when we the, when we first were doing these podcasts from home, and I think the first episode that we had Elise on after we started working from home, uh, she helped develop the Night Raker, and I've got the yes, Night Raker poster. Yes, that is true. Here. Oh yeah. Uh, now I can't wait to get a, a Good Morning Ratman poster. Good and, uh, news, put it Rat- or good, <laughs> good news, Ratman. Good morning, okay, Ratman. I'm, I'm thinking of Good Morning from Hell. People keep talking about Good Morning from Hell. <laughs> Good news, Rep Man. And put if it there's over a here. way to like deep fake voices to yeah. get Robin Williams to do Good Morning Rat Man. <laughs> the poster should definitely say Good Morning Rat Man and then, and then morning is crossed out in the word good news. news. Oh, I yeah, I really I hope that we build out an entire universe on our TikTok. Every time I'm on, we you know I'm I'm, en- I'm enjoying this. This is yeah, uh, me too. Good news rat man I, is really doing a lot of heavy lifting in this episode. <laughs> I, I do think the Night Raker and Ratman could be could have some kind of dynamic. They are frenemies. You know? They are yeah. frenemies. Yeah. Like most relationships with Ratman. <laughs> they do not like him, but they tolerate it, him. It's complicated. It should yeah, it should be that the Night Raker, who is a neighbor of Ratman, mm-hmm. every night when he goes out to rake, he finds rat droppings left by Ratman. <laughs> Ratman. Right, but they're like human size. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's and just pieces of shit. He looks over and Ratman's just looking above the fence, just staring at him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, Mr. Uh, Night Raker. <laughs> Did you enjoy my dropping? I left you something. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a good man. idea. That's I love it. Let me let me get uh, Tom Warner on the phone right now. Let's, yeah, uh, let's, yeah. Get, get both the Warner. Going. Well, Lise has an in with her new show. It's it's yeah. they, they, we know people now. It's fine. I'll mention it to the bros. Yeah. Are you yeah. are are you going to be reviewing uh, Good News Ratman on your new podcast? <laughs> yeah. Um, they said that there is a conflict of interest because no one wants to watch this show. <laughs> <laughs> They just kept saying, who the fuck is this for? And it was weird because we were in a really corporate meeting. For yeah. them to be using how's, that kind of language. Well, Gus, how's the chatter in the chat? Did they Are they excited for yeah. Good News Ratman? The pe- yeah, people love it. In fact, Computer Ronin says, Good Morning Ratman can be Ratman's Stop podcast. Stop saying Good Morning <laughs> Ratman. Did you, hear, did you hear what I said? It's it's Ratman's podcast in the show. Do you think? Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay. Oh, okay. Because so, he's definitely a podcaster. A hundred percent. A hundred percent is a podcaster to <clears throat> no one. No yeah. one listens to Good Morning Ratman. No. Who would wants to listen to Good Morning Ratman? But he spent <laughs> he spent too much money on his setup to give up now. This has to be the thing. This has to work. This has to bring back Denise and the kids. There's no other way. Oh. Um, I I. I also think like we we should definitely at some point RTX or whatever do uh, uh do a good morning yes, good, like, good news rap good news rap man I fucked it up <laughs> what I fucked it up I put now good morning rap man in everyone's have, yeah head. yeah you blew like in our heads it's all fucked up but that's cool because then if we start so we start the show yeah good news rap man but we also start the podcast good morning rap man which is an in character podcast with Ratman and him just grumbling about his troubles. They're all 12 minute episodes. None of them are good or interesting. Well, I was but gonna say that's at, his podcast. I would say at RTX, that should be the only time you can hear Good Morning Ratman because he doesn't know how to <laughs> upload it. He's like, well, I finally got a live audience so I can I finally have a venue someone yeah. can hear me. He's going to pull out like a, like, a, like a little pocket recorder and a megaphone. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, guys, I, I'm calling it now. Six seasons and a movie. I mean, oh hell I yeah! God. Take that, I think we camp, got camp. Now what? Do something <laughs> about it. <laughs> oh my Man. god! I love Ratman. He Ratman's is. saved my life. Yeah, he's really something. Ratman yeah. was there. There were there's one set of footprints on the sand, and that's when Ratman was carrying me. What? <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty. Uh, pretty blessed. <laughs> I gotta say, chat's loving it. I think uh, they're gonna be upset if we, if we don't make this. I mean, I've chat just been seems thinking, to really be all positive. Someone said everybody loves Ratman. Walk. I'm getting. I, you know, on the Mega sixty four podcast, like a week ago, they were trying to do like Ray Romano impressions, and Derek <laughs> got pretty close, but Rocco like wasn't even in the ballpark. I don't know if I can do a I, I can't do like a Ray <clears throat> Romano impression. Like there what's are certain the, words. Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like Kermit a little bit. Yeah. You gotta say like dog, dog. Uh, uh, oh wow! Wow! 
Cool. Uh, Holy what? shit. My You're, brother. Well, we. Uh, Deborah. <laughs> Ma. The Deborah. kids. You're really good at that. I, I think like Ray shopping. Romano's hacking our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> it's him. It's uh, I say, uh, said. Peachy Keenan chat says that Ratman needs to sell books. <laughs> the show needs to sell books. What? <laughs> The point of, of uh, good news Ratman good news. is to sell is to sell. No, it's to sell a subscription to his zine or his zine. Is it, is zine. Oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm he called. It's definitely his zine. <laughs> oh, it's it's popping off now. We got Ratman Begins, How I Met Your Ratman, Two and a Half oh. Ratman. Oh fuck! Oh my god! Call it Ratman calls it a zine, and everybody goes, "Isn't it pronounced zine?" And he goes, "No, look at how it's spelled." No. <laughs> He's got a oh, podcast shit. and a scene. He's got all his decades covered. Yeah, he might, he's like, he he's just like fuckface. He's got all, he's, it's a whole mess of DIY shit. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm like lightheaded. That, like, we really went down like a rat hole with that one. That's really <laughs> something. Holy I mean, shit. I don't think we, I, 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 how do you, how do you move I, on from I was that? just like, thinking, I don't know yeah, how you transition can't. out of good news, rat no. man. No. I'm, I'm exhausted. Now. I'm exhausted out of Ratman. I just everyone says like Aaron, Eric is so funny, he's such a talent. He needs a vehicle, and I yeah. think this is it. You think it's you think it's me and rat prosthetics? I, I think it's <laughs> <laughs> limited prosthetics, limited select prosthetics. Uh, I think it's good news, Ratman. Yeah, hundred percent. And the thing is, like, you film it in Austin, you do the puppet. Yeah, I'll voice the puppet. I don't need to even. Need yeah, it can be ADR. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could just do the yeah. We'll have we'll have someone else do the the puppet voice. You could just do it later. ADR it. It's good. But we'll, I think we make it really obvious. ADR like we're trying. I think the thing about this show is that it's gonna look like we're trying to be avant garde, but really it's just that we're like hopeless and we don't know how to make a show <laughs> like this. So it's like oh, they like did not do sound mixing on this, and it's like yeah, I don't know how to do that. So <laughs> it's just this is just kind of what you get, you know. Yeah, I bought a Go XLR Mini and I just used that. <laughs> <laughs> that was enough <laughs> oh man good oh wow good news rat man gets a picture and everything and it's just boy it's just me looking uh, like a rat this peter, is a picture peter man. h just uh sent me this peter h in chat when i put this great up here. job he, he crossed can, it out oh let's go let's go full screen can we get, on can we get the single on me look oh, at that look at that Good what, I want to know. Like, nope. the, News. I like the colorful background and the font that are that, that's used here this is very yeah. much what I imagined in my head, except, and look, I don't want to criticize Peter because I think he does a great job. The, to me, n the word news is written in Sharpie quickly. Yeah. Oh, also, gotcha, there's yeah. no giant rat prosthetic on your face. That's, well, yeah, I know. That's just kind of how I look all the time. Oh. <laughs> like, imagine you roll out of bed and you look in the mirror and you go, well, <laughs> well this again. And that's just what it is all day, every good day. Good morning, rat man. Every yeah. morning you look in the mirror. Yep. Sometimes you drink too much and then you just put two hands on the on the sink and then you look in you just like look directly in your eyes into the mirror and you go what is this every day what is this this is it this is ever <laughs> it doesn't change this is just who you are it's not that you've chosen to be this it's what you were given and then then uh you throw up and then you fall asleep <laughs> good news rat man good good news rat man <laughs> sound i oh. can't wait it's coming 2022 wow that's really soon it's soon we got to get working on it like yeah i mean by our standards that's very quick yeah <laughs> that's pretty quick. quick we i mean it's <laughs> it's almost the end of q1 I, 2021 i mean I, yeah i was thinking I, about that earlier crazy so i would argue that we could get this show turned around if it had little to no oversight which i think it will i i agree i agree i think lewis hands off ryan hands off uh jordan levin i'll let you see rough cuts but no notes and that's and that's how who else has. who else can keep Good hands news, off? Good news, Ratman is definitely a no notes. Yeah, yeah we, <laughs> you have to go back and fix this. I dare say we do not. <laughs> I think it's done. Yeah. I think we released it already. <laughs> yep. It's every video you made in high school. Yeah. What do you mean re edit? I, I do. I know. I know. I said earlier that I think every episode should end with Ratman going through his giant human sized rat hole. But uh -huh. I also think every single episode should end with Ratman turning off the lights and closing the door uh -huh. in a very poignant way. Mm. Mm -hmm. And like it's like like it, treat every episode like it's going to be the last. And he like, quietly just says to might, himself, because it, might be night. Last. "It makes me think of like uh, the Incredible Hulk TV show where he's sad yeah. and hitchhiking down the yeah. Yeah. the road, mm -hmm. like his thumbs just out and the sad piano music's playing." Yeah. Yep. And he turns to the empty room and goes. Good night, Ratman. 
and turns off the light. I, did, I, know, I noticed uh, Javen in, in chat said, we want Ruby. I mean, I definitely think there's a way to seed Ratman as a character in Ruby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. But we could try to get Ruby in there. What yeah. is Ruby a friend of me? Well, no, no, no. I think they want they want Ratman in Ruby. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the hard part with that is that some yeah. of us have voiced some of us who are Ratman have voiced characters in Ruby who are now fucking dead. So spoiler, uh, there might be, you know, some well, run over there uh, where well, they go. They're dead. Wait, they this guy sounds like this guy sounds like the main character of Ruby Forest. And, um, you know, I just, you know, we have to see what happens, I guess. Eddie Revis, I leave it to you. Well, they could change. <laughs> they could change Forrest's voice. They could say oh, we've had an actor change to Forrest. That's good. I like that. That's smart. We have then, to hire. Ruby what's Lark. McConaughey doing? You think McConaughey will come in and do like some Forrest stuff? As long as he's not running for well, governor of Texas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that happening? I don't think it is. <laughs> but, well, he might not because we will have a plot line where Ratman runs for governor of Texas. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. Against 100%. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, he never files the paperwork, but he is telling people that he's going to be fixing things around he's, here. Just like you just have to write him in for now because they're yeah. out to get him. <laughs> for now, for now. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. This time, write me in. But next time, I promise it'll be official. <laughs> oh, man, this is great. Good morning, Ratman, the podcast. Good news, Ratman, the television program. I think this is great. I this stand is, with Ratman, the political movement. That's great. I hey, I think coming to HBO Max, no problem. They got everything on there. They got if they got C Lab twenty twenty one on HBO Max, we can get good news. Ratman. I on think HBO they need Max. to switch their slogan from where HBO meets so much more to where HBO meets Ratman. <laughs> and everyone goes, why do they change it to this? What the fuck is Ratman? <laughs> <laughs> We just need to work on some Ratman brand awareness. It'll be, it'll my, get there. It, my it feels, fear. It feels <laughs> had what forty years to work on their brand. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I think we can get there in what four months with Ratman. And what's my a static fear. screen? No, that we need Ratman. Uh, not anymore. Now it's now it's Ratman. <laughs> <laughs> you turn it on. You want to watch season three of The Sopranos? It's not a static screen. It's just me going. <laughs> But it's, it's the same I, sound like, effect. It's like M <laughs> MGM has the lion. HBO Max will have Ratman. <laughs> and we're we're definitely gonna have Happy Meal style toys, which yes. you can purchase at Spaghetti Warehouse. Hundred <laughs> percent. Are they still around? A Spaghetti Ratman. Ratman. Yeah. Oh, Spaghetti Warehouse. Yeah. Oh man, Spaghetti Warehouse Ratman toys is all these. Ch none of these children want them, but boy, they are forced on. No, take four. <laughs> take five. Give them to your friends. There's a, yeah, there's a clown by the door, and every time a kid's leaving, uh, shoves a Ratman toy at them. It has no points of articulation. It's just a statue, and it looks terrible. And we go, well, that's Ratman. He decided to do yeah. this. He said he knew a guy and was just going to get it done instead of going through the proper channels and doing it right. The that's Arlington Ratman. one is closed, but the uh, Houston one is open for curbside and non-contact delivery. Yeah. The, yeah, that's going to be a big part of the marketing win. The yeah. Spaghetti Warehouse in Austin was their third location ever. Wow. And now it's just a big building that says Spaghetti a, Warehouse on the side, but I don't know what's inside of it. Because not spaghetti. It's a, it's a bar. That's where uh, we had uh, an RTX party there before, right? What's that bar called? Market. The Market. Oh. <gasps> the Market was Spaghetti Warehouse? Yeah, like the Market what? is on the end of the Spaghetti Warehouse building. Like if you're on... Wow. Oh. Uh, if you're on Second Street staring at the market, that building, if you look to the left, that big building, like that was the spaghetti warehouse. Uh, I take my spaghetti to market. No, I'm not a, like that. <laughs> Didn't we film an RT podcast there? Yes, yes, that building. Uh, we filmed an RT somewhere. podcast at the spaghetti we warehouse. At the market. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. The spaghetti. Wait, what's the market short for? Is it the spaghetti market? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. You buy and sell spaghetti. <laughs> Uh, I do. I do. I was thinking about it. You've all seen WandaVision, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, abs yeah, do, absolutely. You know me. I do think we should do the the dichotomy that WandaVision does, the dynamic they do where like you're in the world with Wanda and then you get pulled out with the agents. And I definitely think since Gus would be playing the undercover FBI yeah. agent, yeah. we do see him in the world of Ratman. But then we take we take all these characters out of the world like you know it's gus in the truck yeah the 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 ice cream truck outside and but it's actually like a tactical surveillance vehicle van. with all kinds yep, of yeah. surveillance van and he's like i think i think we're getting there i think we've got enough evidence on ratman that we might be able to prosecute i, I, lo <laughs> I love this it has to yep. be shot in four by three 
Yeah, <laughs> it has to be shot in four by three for, for cinematic for, reasons, yeah. by creative for, vision. But yeah. that's his vision. I, like this is great because that's like the best episode of The Sopranos is the third is the first episode of season three, I think. Mister Ruggiero's neighborhood, where it is just following all the FBI guys who are trying to plant something in Tony Soprano's house <laughs> so they can like listen to like a wire, and that's the whole episode. It's all like in their vans and back at like their headquarters. And so I think if every episode of Good News Rap Man ends like season three episode one of a soprano of the sopranos i'm all for it i think that's great we got in all yeah. these other people it's we, just yeah. gus yeah, yeah wow. gus we we see his turn and, and you know mm-hmm. it's it's yeah we gus, gotta do it. gus are you still in yeah uh i'm just laughing because in chat risa reno says i heard wandavision <laughs> and started to tune in but somehow it's still ratman <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's the second uh, season. That's the second season. It's still Ratman. Yeah. You, <laughs> he didn't go anywhere. Is, you still, fucking thought he's still here. Still Ratman. I feel, I kind of feel bad for that person. Like, they've tuned us out. Like, they're done yeah. with it. We I said told something you. that peaked them back in. And I like, told you, what? there's people that fuck. This is going to be that episode of the podcast where people go, I fucking love the Ratman thing. And then other people go, this is the worst fucking episode of this podcast yeah. that I've ever done. They've where talked they just about talking Ratman about for Ratman 50 minutes. For an hour. For an hour. <laughs> talking about this man who's a rat, <laughs> I think. He's divorced, but not really. He's keeping a woman hostage. There's a spaghetti a mailman. <laughs> 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 We got to get with Hannah. Hannah, I know you're watching this. Hannah McCarthy, thank you so much for all the work you do around Rooster Teeth. I know you're watching this. And thank you for being a first member. Yes. And thank you for being a first member by virtue of working at the company. I appreciate it. (laughs) Hannah, uh, I need you to start building a deck for this show. Um, It's not really to pitch it to anyone because we are making it whether they say yes or no. This is for internal use. Yeah, Yeah, it's mostly just for happenstance to be like, do you guys have a deck for that? And we go, yeah, it's already approved. And then we we just hand it off. We can show it in Hall H at Comic-Con. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And when we do that, we come back to Rishi and say, you need to pay us. Yeah. We made this. You need to pay us. (laughs) Now. You need to pay us. (laughs) Oh man. We did not do this because we wanted to. We did this because we had to. You think we wanted to do this? Is that what you think? You think we did? We, we wanted? wanted it more than anything. So what? <laughs> <laughs> so what? Now pay us. <laughs> oh, this is my favorite episode of this podcast. <laughs> wow, yeah. uh, this is this is the kind of stuff that I do every time I come on here. Just yeah. bullshit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and then I get a new poster behind me. Yep. I'm gonna this have is... I'm gonna have good news, Ratman, and good morning, Ratman. <laughs> two, you get two posters out of this one. Uh, good morning, Ratman. The good news, Ratman podcast. <laughs> By, by Ratman himself. <laughs> the merch. Ratman merch. Oh, oh Ratman merch. People are going to fuck. I, we need to have two shirts that say, like, I stand with Ratman. And another one that says, yeah. like, I hope Ratman fucking dies. Yeah. Because that's, I think that's going to be, like, the real vibe that we get oh, off this one. I was just going to say, what, like, whatever Bart Simpson shirt exists, replace it with a Ratman. <laughs> Do the Ratman. Do the Ratman. Yeah, yeah people, yeah. this time oh. next year, kids are going to be doing the Ratman. Yeah, man. Don't, yeah. don't have a Ratman. Oh! Oh, and rap, rap, doing the rap man is also whippets. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> if if so, we're talking he, about doing whippets, this is my new favorite show. It sounds, on the it sounds you know, when you say do the rap man, it sounds like a dance or something. No, right. it's just, no, it's doing, it's just it's going in the alley behind, doing whippets. Going behind the 7 Eleven with your friends <laughs> and doing whippets and going, this is it, huh? Do this the rap man. man. Do, do the rap man. man. I'm like spitting. <laughs> I'm frothing at the mouth to do the rat man. He's Come on, rabbit, everybody. He do the rat, rat man. man. Also, rat man's parents were killed. Yeah. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, fuck. He's a classic uh, tragic figure, uh, the rat. And, and, and we need to retell his origin story every season. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what happened to Ratman's parents? Where are they? <laughs> oh, oh my go. God. Oh, every season, every episode. Oh. Well, he just tells people that his parents are dead. He just hasn't seen them in a long time. Hi, Therefore, I'm Ratman. My parents were killed doing whippets in the alley. <laughs> <laughs> but they said, we're going to do the <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my right. god <laughs> they, oh. Said, they said they were gonna do the rat man even before he became the rat 
And maybe that's why he became the Rat Man. Yeah, that's how he was. About it. That's how he was conceived. They did the Rat Man. <laughs> I need to tell so many people about this show where a man is a rat man because his parents did whippets. Holy fucking shit. Oh my god. Oh, oh I'm gonna throw up. Oh, it's so fucking funny. Alright, that's it. 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 I don't I, I, that's it. No I, I more rat man. Thank you, bro. Gotta end on a high note. At least killed it. Oh, Thank oh, you, Elise. Yeah, this, is uh, this is beautiful, guys. I'm if, so excited. If you think oh. Elise is funny, she's got that new podcast coming out. Uh <laughs> Popcorn and Shield. Popcorn, but when does it come out? Do I, did you say? Do we know yet? Do we have it released? It's, it's oh. a, a trailer at the beginning of April. We'll have the dates locked in soon. Look, we probably weren't supposed okay. to talk about it, but who's going to stop us? Uh, yeah, Rat we'll Man? say the beginning, so. the beginning of April. The beginning of April. You could check out Popcorn and Shield, Froth at the Mouth, Froth for Rat Man, and then get ready for Popcorn and Shield. It's going to be a really cool show. I've seen the tests. I've seen like the first episode, and it's fucking fun. <laughs> Right. Thanks, Eric. I've also seen the tests for Ratman. Wow! It was, po- it was this wow. podcast, and yeah. uh, they're great. <laughs> and uh, thanks, Cole. You're not here to promote anything, but thank you no, for being uh, <laughs> Watch that show. Watch that show. Where's <laughs> where's this over there? Watch that Other show. Yeah. Oh, oh, popcorn and Shield. Right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.